The groundbreaking invention of photography in 1839 not only sparked amazement, but also ushered in a new era of joy and wonder across the world. Individuals could now immortalize their surroundings with remarkable photorealistic precision, capturing a piece of their environment to have for the rest of time. However, this new technological marvel was not without its challenges. Early photography faced two significant hurdles that demanded immediate attention and innovation. The painstakingly long exposure times that often stretched for hours to produce a single image and the absence of colors in the film. To make photography accessible and practical for the masses, these obstacles needed to be overcome. The quest for further progress in photography began with the evolution from monochromatic to color photography. In 1861, James Clerk Maxwell emerged as a pioneer in this endeavor, introducing an innovative method to infuse color into the world of photography. Using a 19th century magic lantern, Maxwell captured three distinct images of a tartan ribbon, one captured through a red filter, one through a blue filter, and one through a green filter. By superimposing these three images, Maxwell achieved a semblance of the original colors of the ribbon. While the result was not flawless, Maxwell's experiment unveiled a crucial revelation. The colors of red, blue, and green could be blended to recreate a multitude of colors, laying the foundation for future advancements in color imaging. Although a large portion of the theory of color photography was understood after Maxwell, scientists and photographers would still struggle to find a way to recreate an image that represented the original colors of a scene. To add to this, for the setups that did produce color, the colors produced would often deteriorate after exposure to light for extended periods of time, making it even more difficult to give colored photos mainstream popularity. After a while, many were doubting that color photography was possible at all, and the future of the field started to lay in doubt. It would take 30 more years after Maxwell's photo before a true, long-lasting, colorful image would be successfully recreated at the hands of a Franco-Luxembourgish physicist by the name of Gabriel Lippmann. To understand how Lippmann succeeded, we first must understand how film photography works. A film is made of several parts, but the part that actually captures the photograph is called the emulsion layer. This layer consists of silver halide crystals which are suspended in gelatin. Most of the time, the silver halide is silver bromide, consisting of silver cations and bromide anions arranged in a cubic crystal lattice. When light strikes a bromide ion, it ejects the extra valence electron and sends it flying through the crystal. This electron attracts a silver cation and combines with it to form silver. If three or four silver atoms are formed in the same location, the area becomes stable and becomes what is called a latent image center. The image formed through this process is called a negative image due to the nature of the more intense light exposures resulting in darker spots on the film having a negative or opposite impact to the intended result. These negative images are used as a filter in the development stage where light shines through it to another emulsion layer creating another opposite effect and finally yielding the intended result of the original image. Lippmann's approach to film photography was very similar to this previous method. However, his genius lied in his novel concept regarding the rearmost layer of the film. Typically, this layer functions as an absorption layer, utilizing a dark substance to absorb incoming light and prevent unwanted reflections back into the emulsion layer that might compromise the image quality. Lippmann diverged from convention with a counterintuitive approach. He replaced the light absorbing material with a layer of liquid mercury, transforming this layer into a highly reflective surface, essentially turning it into a mirror. This was done to maximize light reflection back through the emulsion layer. As light waves reflect back through this layer, they interact with the incoming waves, interfering to produce standing waves within the emulsion layer. These standing waves produce an interference pattern within the emulsion, leading to the formation of silver clumps 
only at points where constructive interference occurs. Consequently, gaps emerge between these silver fringes with the size of these gaps correlating to the wavelength or color of the standing wave in a given area. After development of an image taken like this, an angled prism would be attached to the top of the film because the image could only be seen in color from a certain angle. Then, white light would be beamed into the film. When the light comes into contact with the silver fringes, the silver layers act as partial mirrors, reflecting some of the light back to the viewer and refracting some light to the next layer of silver below it. This process continues through each layer of silver, and the recombined light returns to the viewer, with different colors shown in different areas, depending on the gaps between the silver fringes. In 1891, Lippmann unveiled his results to the Academy of Sciences, declaring, I have succeeded in obtaining the image of the spectrum with its colors on a photographic plate, whereby the image remains fixed and can remain in daylight without deterioration. By 1892, he had successfully produced numerous color photographs, ranging from a vibrant stained glass window to a colorful parrot and even a vase of flowers. His results on interference-based color photography were published in 1894, ultimately earning him the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1908 for his method of reproducing colors photographically based on the phenomenon of interference. Although Lippmann's discovery was a huge step for color photography, and there was some commercialization of his process shortly after his discovery, there still was a huge issue facing color photography exposure times. Despite resolving color reproduction challenges, Lippmann's method still required lengthy exposure times, still rendering it impractical for widespread adoption. The era of widespread commercial color photography wouldn't come about until the invention of the autochrome by the Lumiere brothers in 1903. Lippmann's discovery may not have been the first colored photograph ever taken, and it also may not have been the invention that sparked mass integration of color photography into society, but it was still possibly the greatest contribution to the advancement of color photography in its history. Lippmann showed, for the first time ever, that not only was it possible for a photograph to capture all colors on the visible light spectrum, but also that it was possible to create a color image that would not deteriorate over time. His work is what inspired the Lumiere brothers to experiment with photography, who initially tried to advance Lippmann's interference method before ultimately turning to autochrome. Gabriel Lippmann played a pivotal role in the advancement of color photography, and without his experiments, color photography would most likely not have been possible. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here to see more scientific advancements made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.